This is the Power Producers Podcast, where we are refining and redefining the sales game. Rule number one is you have to believe in yourself. You're the only one who doesn't think you belong in this appointment. The prospect has already validated your existence by scheduling time with you. Get it through your head you belong here, go in there, crush it, and close the deal. A place where sales professionals can come to learn from other sales professionals and thought leaders that have mastered their craft. The difference between a good salesperson and a best-in-class salesperson is only two minutes. By spending an extra two minutes on what you might think is a mundane task in the sales game, you separate yourselves from the pack, you grow your book of business, you close more deals, and you retain your accounts. As well as their peers who are still striving for perfection to achieve their why. I have a wife and four kids. Failure is not an option. Real sales professionals. Real stories. Real results. Are you ready to feel the power? Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Power Producers Podcast, where we're finding and redefining the sales game today. We have got a guy that is probably like 20 years early in terms of technology. Like, it blows my mind every time I hear the stuff they're doing over at Arius Analytics. We are privileged to have Mr. Ron Schroyer with us today to talk about, you know, what they're doing at Arius Analytics. Uh, some of you may have heard it as Donna for Agents. And we're going to clarify what that means, what they can do, and, and talk a little bit about how they're integrating with a lot of the systems that we are using right now to make it a lot easier to intelligently run an agency. So, Ron, glad you carved some time out to come t- hang with us today. Yeah, thanks, David. I'm really, really super excited. Love everything you're doing. You've had some incredible guests on, so I'm honored to be a part of it, too. Looking forward to the conversation. Cool deal. So as we get ramped up, as we always do, why don't you give everybody sort of the 10,000 foot overview of your background? Because you've been doing technology related work and insurance for a little while now. This is it's not like you just got out of college and immediately started doing this. Yeah, yeah. And it, well, I think it's interesting because a lot of people who end up in insurance kind of fall into insurance, too. But I've always been uh, always been in a sales capacity ever since I got out of college. And that's going on. They got the better part of two decades now um, of it. So it. it I worked a lot with professional service sales and technology, and then I ran into a non-compete, and I ended up uh, be, going to be an insurance producer for Huntington Insurance, based out of Colum- uh, Columbus, Ohio, but I was in their Pittsburgh branch. Um, and I, it was during the time of uh, ACA or Obamacare, and it was a really interesting time in the industry, especially on the benefits side, because it was a little different ball game when it came to being a producer, um, but also being able to differentiate yourself as a producer, too. And as you kind of evolve through that, you started to realize um, how far behind insurance was with technology, even down to the desk level as far as who was utilizing what to service clients, understand the business. Um, so I did that for a couple of years. And I, I love the the whole part on the produ- production side of things too. I know part of the industry, and but I just felt like that wasn't the right fit for me. So I kind of melted. There. And I got the opportunity to go work with a company called Risk Match that was really early on in the, in the InsurTech game because I think everybody's been talking about InsurTech partners and stuff for like roughly the last five, seven years. And I started with uh, Risk Match in, in uh, 2015, like in October time frame. So they were kind of one of the earlier ones. And what it did was it basically together the data that you had in the agency management system. So like at the exact, you had the ability to just make quick decisions. Hey, how much premium do I have that I can go trade with a certain market of these clients that are a perfect fit for it? How can I start to weigh my commissions that I'm getting? How can I start understanding where I have opportunities within my book of business? Um, But it was just working with that data inside the agency management system. Um, I think when I look at my experience, I learned so much from that team because Kabir Syed, who founded that, uh, he brought together a lot of incredible industry experts. On the data side, the technology side, the client service side, um, sales in the insurance industry side. So I got a chance to kind of pick bits bits and pieces as far as what we were trying to do for the industry, but also learn a lot about the commercial insurance side because I was an EB part of that. Um, Risk match was a great experience. Four and a half years. Half of that was before the acquisition. Then we got acquired by Vertifor. And at Vertifor, I had the opportunity to go work with hundreds and hundreds of agencies um, throughout the years to talk about how they want to start taking this step down the road of using data to run their run their business, what type of partners were out there, education, get stuff into action, help them get get very tangible results based off that data. Um, and then, then Arius came around. So it, it, I got the opportunity at Arius because they took a little bit different of a spin with data. And, and I think... The, 
thing from an insurance producer standpoint, insurance company, the agent, or just the end customer. And I think it's unique because all that we work with, all the different vendors that we work with, even outside of insurance, they have so much knowledge about us as consumers, um, whether what we're ready to buy. And, and when you're on the phone with a credit card company, they're like, oh, you know, we have a mortgage department. We didn't know you guys are shopping for a mortgage. And it's like perfect and timely. And that's really what we want to do at, at Arius and with this Donna platform is give give the end users who are working with customers just quick insights how they can better service their customers, make sure they're keeping them, but let them know where they should spend their time. What types of products should they go position as of today so they can just delight the customers, grow the business? Um, and again, we're always about path of least resistance, so not having to go out and get net new business, just work with the clients that you have um, is where our kind of bread and butter is on the Arius side. So we could, we'll dig, I know we're going to dig into a lot further, but that's kind of the background on my end. Um, love the industry. It's going on it's going seven, eight years now um, within this part of the industry. So it, it's super exciting to be a part of. So I have one really important question. Didn't yeah. Ryan Deeds work at Risk Match? No, Ryan Deeds actually, um, he, he works for Kabir, who, who started Risk Match now. So okay. he went over and he works for Enable. So Kabir is actually starting yeah, I up. I knew a, that, but I yep. didn't know if he was at Risk Match back in the day or not. Because my, my very important question is, what was that guy like to hang out with? Because <laughs> I can only imagine. <laughs> I, just had, I just had a conversation with one of his close um, that was in a similar role to him. Because, you know, he was, he was inside an agency for a while, too. And Ryan actually talked to us. Very, very close to when we got acquired by Vertifor about coming over and stuff too. And I just don't think there was the, the appropriate role that was available for him because he is, uh, he's as unique but intelligent as they get um, with his knowledge <laughs> in the industry. I mean, I, I know you That's had a very on. polished response. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I try to be a polished guy every once in a while too, especially on the air. Um, but no, it's, I mean, now he, he unique um, and he, he's very, very well connected, but he also, um, knows how to build things that are going to be very suitable for agencies to operate effectively. And I think that like Kabir grabbing him to be a part of what he's building over at Enable right now, um, it's going to be a pretty, pretty awesome platform. And, and that speaks to exactly what Kabir did at Risk Match. He put together a wonderful team in a lot of different areas that you need to build a software company, but also have that same de domain expertise you need in the insurance industry too. Um, and Ryan's kind of that perfect fit for that too. Yeah, no, I love the guy, man. And we had him on. It was probably one of the best podcasts, no pressure, one of the best podcasts we had ever done. But, you know, I probably listened to that one three or four times. Yeah. And, you know, we have gotten to be, you know, good friends through social. We've never yeah. even met in person. But, you know, he's constantly pinging me, hey, what do you look for here? What do you look for here? Mm -hmm. All of this other stuff. And, um, my takeaway you know, from that pod was that I needed to get FRP tatted on my forearms. <laughs> Waiting for that. Yeah. That was my next comment, too. <laughs> yeah, no, the, I mean, listen, people, if you want to talk about somebody who cares about agents and is all in, that guy is all in for sure. There but you go. We're not talking about deeds today. He got enough air time. Get right? out of here, I mean, he'll, get it, he'll have his chance to come back soon enough. But talk a little bit about what you guys are building at, at a high level, and let's just start drilling down a little bit because there's a lot of stuff there that I think I think people can get confused with shiny not think I know people get confused with shiny object syndrome and so my mission in having you on today was to make sure that they understood number one y'all aren't a shiny object like you've got a legit product that is going to change the way that the industry works so I want you to talk a little bit about it concept high level what you're doing to gather data use it all of that but then let's let's drill down, man, because some of that stuff is like James Bond stuff that I think that you guys are doing. It's crazy, <laughs> and it, it it really is, and it's 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 fun because I think over the last couple of years um, since I started Arius, like we, we a really really nice network of users, of agents, of advisors to help us build out this product. But you know, part of when I was evaluating what move was next after Risk Match was like talking to the the because the company's been around for about eight years. So it's not just a company that's been built, you know, a year or two ago. Um, so, you know, Anurag Shah, who's our CEO and co-founder, he, he actually sits out of Harvard family from Mumbai over to Hartford to help us build this. Uh, but the company, we've got a large presence over in India, and that's where a lot of our data scientists and developers and a lot of our backend teams are, are working. Um, our two other co-founders, um, Nitin Purit and also Ashish Tana are over there. But initially, Arius worked with some of the largest largest carriers in the world, like AXA, Allianz, Transamerica, HSBC, um, because the India market's a little bit different. And for the billions of people that are in India, 
um, they only have like 53 carriers uh, for the entire mm-hmm. country. I mean, 53 carriers in Pennsylvania. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, and no, I mean, it, it's crazy. Um, so it, the opportunity to scale, especially in this space, is the way the insurance market was set up. However, so we have eight years of experience and we've processed over 60 million insurance policies through our agency channel, but also our carrier, um, carrier products too as well. But the foundational technology is what we brought over to the U.S. to be able to build this Donna platform. Um, so we had a lot of base level learnings about because the transact, the insurance distribution process is different in India. The carriers have a lot more access to the end insurance of the gates versus the kind of the broker, or the agent being the middleman in between each. Um, so there was a lot of things that were applicable. And as you guys know, uh, David, you and I had a chance to meet in person for the first time. We were up at uh, Chris, one of Chris Paradiso's mastermind groups. Um, that he had up in Tarmica's offices too. So Frank Sentner, who is um, one of our advisors, and he's the godfather of InsureTech, he's, he's good buddies with Paradiso. Um, so we're sitting there talking because my background's in working with independent agents on the analytics side. Frank, certainly, that's his basically his entire career of doing that. Um, he told Chris, he goes, hey, I think we have something unique here. Can we, can we start playing around with some of the data that you have? um in hawksoft and see if we have a, a kind of a viable product fit based off what we learned in india and that's how donna yeah, it's got like started. andrea bocelli showing up to karaoke yeah. night at the local <laughs> pub i'm to take the mic for a minute and sing something for you i mean the, the, the freaking godfather of data asks if he can play with your data like how much do you want frank come on it's incredible and i mean and, it, and that's why we like we have surrounded we're very very fortunate because we've surrounded ourselves with a lot of a lot of people like that um, but we were sitting there looking and, and we did that in January, this end of December, January of 2020. And then finally at the end of January on rugs, like, I, I think we got a product here that's going to be pretty strong. Cause Chris was like kind of blown away by some of the insights we were able to provide before Donna even exists. So then our team went to work and started building out the platform when we launched on 2020 and, and really in a nutshell, and we'll get into stuff that you talk about in a nutshell. Um, Donna lets you know exactly where you should spend your time as an agency, whether it be from an executive level to, to start segmenting customers where you should engage, but down to a desk level user, where are these three customers? I know as of today, I can go sell an umbrella policy, uh, policy to, and what are the reasons why, or on top of that high value customers that we have, the VIP type that are at risk of us right now. I want to know that before that event actually happens so I can help them it. Um, so it's all about point your point them in the direction of an opportunity at a certain event. Um, and that's really at its core what Donna five things. I know we'll get down a, a few more levels here in a sec. I just got a text. I don't know if it's true or not, but apparently Bradley Flowers and his wife had their baby. So that's yeah. always good. Congrats nice. to both of them. I was t- texting. Yeah. I was worried about the hurricane. It just went through. And, um, and I know yeah. he wasn't he hasn't been feeling that great the last couple. That's super exciting, man. Yeah, it'll be interesting because he was just interacting on a Facebook Messenger thread like right before I jumped yeah. on the podcast. And not to call him out or anything. But... Just, in the, just in the OR. With... <laughs> hey, I've been there, man. There's nothing for the husband to do. Chicken you might Caesar as well take on the time. Yeah, chicken, chicken Caesar, Caesar wrap, wrap. On, the, on the business end, you know, when my daughter was born. By the time number four comes, Ron, you've seen it all. So. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. I'm, I'm two, two and done and right now, um, which he's excited about. And he's going to take some, some well-earned. I hope we can achieve that and then uh, get some good reading in and spend some good time with the family. So that, that, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, I think that I don't, obviously we, we can't discuss the how because this yeah. is way, not, I mean, not even this is proprietary. Yeah. It's way too technical to get into. But if you were to put into layman's terms, um, oh, hold on. <laughs> I'm getting real time updates. This may be a false. No, not yet. No baby yet. Take that <laughs> back. Gmail Gmail misfired and sent out Bradley's out of office unintentionally. So but, but I can tell you this, by the time this airs, they will have a baby. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Hopefully baby's healthy and all of that. Same sentiments. But how would you describe it? Like, I mean, that's that's obviously invaluable data, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I know one of the things that we talked about too, and I don't wanna I don't wanna jump all over the place, but I want to make sure we talk about the centimeter score and why that's yes. important and how that works and how that works in agencies. But like, if you were to describe to just the average agent off the street, which is really the people who need to hear what you're doing mm-hmm. because they're so slow to adapt to begin with, we got to start warming them up right now. You know, 
how does it do that? Like artificial intelligence, obviously, but what can you tell us? There's a lot. And I probably should have talked about this as far as it. So but, as you take a look at, at agencies and the technology, that just operate the business. I mean, at, at, at the core, it's the agency management system that you have. And there's actually agency agents are very, I don't think they know the amount of data that they actually have. I think they, they are very, um, not optimistic as far as what the ability you have to use just from that data in the agency management system. So client policy level detail, you know, if you have some activities, some notes that are held within there, but all the other systems they have to use, they got voice systems, they have that's out there and voice, they got Lightspeed, Cotter group, whatever it might be. Then they might have a CRM like, uh, you know, if it's agency zoom or Salesforce, um, better agency until they fit, they kind of transitioned over to the AMS side of things. Um, it, so it's very difficult to be able to get insight, even though there's great little bits and pieces of data in every single one of those that you can use to know more about your customers. So without getting too technical, that's where our specialty is, is kind of breaking down the walls of those systems and bring it all into one spot. Because if you can put those puzzle pieces together, it can give you some good inclination. Hey, what's going on with a lot of my one spot, but also what's going on with an individual customer and how do I know how to use that? And that kind of plays into centimeter. So in, in, in a nutshell, centimeters are secret sauce. So if you look at what we are as a company, we're business intelligence, we're a lot of predictive analytics. That centimeter piece, it's a real-time customer experience score that follows every step of a customer's journey with you as an agent. So from the time I buy my first policy from you, David, it, it follows me through renewals, through claims, service requests, endorsements, new policy, um, testimonials, surveys, all these different events that have a positive or negative effect as far as my engagement with you as an agent. Um, and what, being that we've processed over 65 million policies with this algorithm, we can tell a lot just from policy and billing transactions of what can potentially happen. So we get a data science side of things that's in there. Um, and that's what centimeter, you always want to understand when's the right time to engage a customer. It's not after the, you fell short as far as getting a claim closed out in an appropriate amount of time and working with the carrier and they're frustrated and we have the, the output to be able to show you how frustrated they are with that. It's when they're, they're in a good spot on that scale and then you've got some very tangible ways to be able to protect, protect against some of the risks they may have, but it's also the right time. Um, you don't want to talk to the wife about doing something not crazy about you doing when she's in a bad mood or upset at you. It's the same concept. Hey, what's the timing right? Hit it now. Let's go. And that's what we could provide. Um, so that centimeter is the, the lens into where's, where can we segment? Where, do, where can we spend our time? Where can we go make money? Yeah, I mean, I think that that... So people are getting just now, I think, really getting used to NPS, right? Mm -hmm. This takes that to a completely different level. Yep. Um, you know, to be able to understand how people... And I, I like the naming, by the way, because you're actually able to understand emotion, inflection, yeah. all the tonality, mm -hmm. all of that other stuff. And that takes NPS to a completely different level because you, you could be talking to somebody and think the conversation's going great. Yeah. And voice recognition software may come back and say, eh, not so much. We <laughs> noticed that, you know, all of the, these things. And that's huge, hmm. man. It yeah. is. And, and when you look at, at teaming, teaming the voice, the conversation up with policy... Hey, how long has it taken Ron to renew his policy after his, after his expiration date? You marry all those different pieces together and it starts to give you pinpointed options as far as how, how to work with a client. And NPS is, is phenomenal. And like I know Rocket Referrals does a great job of uh, shooting that info out, the testimonials, and then, then running automated campaigns off of it. And David, you mentioned earlier, like the, there's, I think, a unique spot in the industry now that where there's a lot of companies like us and Tarmica and and Lightspeed and um, Agency Zoom and all these other ones that we all want to connect together because even though there might be overlap of uh, certain yeah. does, if we can connect each one of these systems together, it's going to provide an incredibly powerful tech stack and ecosystem in an efficient way for, for agents to actually use the, use the technologies instead of everybody be siloed in their own different, different platforms. Um, I think that piece, that piece is great. But going back to MPS, it's a, it's a great option to be able to gauge customers um, it's always, hey, how, how have you be likely to refer us? But the challenge you run in with that is, is it's with a small segment of your customers. So you're looking at rate percent of your entire customer base is going to fill out an NPS. Um, so you're missing a big window of what else is going on. And it's, at a, it's at a point in time. 
So you're starting to make judgments across your customer base at, from data that's six months old. And when you go, go in front of looking across all of your clients through all points in time of data that's as good as of today, um, that's what sharp um, and, and be able to differentiate yourself too. Um, and that's, I think that's where we have a unique niche between the blended of the business intelligence, the, the customer experience side, and also the, uh, the uh, predictive analysis that we do as well. Well, I think the other thing too, when you're dealing with NPS, the problem is somebody actually has to click a button and respond to it. That's what I was going to ask about. It, it, so ahead, it's, it's not, well, no, I was going to say, so it, it seems like it's, it's, it's not necessarily something where they have to interact and click on something and, and fill something out. It's more real time live stuff that you're getting based on actions that they're doing over the course of a, a given point in time. Yeah, exactly. It's non-invasive and that's how we're able to get it across every single client. Now we, we still, MPS is a very good useful component of what we do to build out that centimeter score. And that's why we're hooked up with like rocket referrals because that's a plot point in the customer journey. If David's a, a and insured of Kyle's agency and, and he fills out a testimonial to referrals too. And it's like, Hey, I worked with, uh, I worked with Kyle and my referral was incredibly high, but he did a lot of great work for us um, and got us in where you know the premium was was doable for us the underlying is positive so that's what mm -hmm. you, you're able to take we could take the mps score that you provided then we can also take the the text from that testimonial that you provided to or google google review for that matter got it so you guys have started integrating like fiends at this point every mm -hmm. time i talk to somebody they're like oh well we were meeting with ron from uh, arius analytics you know talk about some of those recent integrations that you have, I know you've been talking with Better Agency. I know you guys mm -hmm. have talked with Hawksoft, I believe. Yep. Um, talk about who's out there that you're working with now, because I think that really helps some of the people listening to this understand they're going to be able to get more out of the products that they're already using in many cases. Yeah, and it, it absolutely goes back to what I said. Is is I think a paralysis to an extent of the number of systems that that users have and have to jump into right now, and it goes back to what I mentioned companies being able to work together because I think everyone has their very power of what they can do. And we're incredible at, and I'm not going to, it's not me. We, it's my backend data team. They're incredible at data and analytics. Um, so that's where our strong point is. And you look at all these other companies that have these platforms that are just inherently to a workflow of an agency, agency management system, CRM, um, quoting systems, that type, they do their, their things phenomenally well. They already have the the kind of engine built and the, the tools built for us to just throw our analytics into. So we're one of the few companies that you think, like we don't care if you log into Donna or not, because what we're doing is connecting to these other systems. If I want to push, um, we're, we're starting to f kick things off and wrap things up with light speed, for example. If I want to push um, my centimeter score and have screen pops and understand exactly the, the voice sentiment coming out, of, coming out of the conversation they have, you can see that within the screen pop of light speed. If I want to run trigger events with agency Zoom, um, customer sentiment score, three things you need to do. We can run the targeted, the automation and the activities and tasks through that. If I have a renewal coming up and I want to make sure that we're, this customer's in a good spot, but it seems like the rate might, there might be better options out there within that same ecosystem. I can go uh, in multiple carriers and stay within, within just a couple systems instead of, you know, 10 different ones. So wherever we call internally at us and that's where we want to live um if we can hook with all these different integration partners ams is are very important all these other ancillary technologies are very important um that's where we're going to be able to win that's where we're going to be able to grow our client base that's where people are going to utilize what we're doing the absolute most wild yeah so you're the reason why i think of a pair of jordans and it shows up on my facebook feed <laughs> and that, on, <laughs> without joke that's exactly it it's the same and it, it's funny because um that that's where you start to when you engage with an insurer and you're using our our product how'd you know i just you know i bought a new house i, I own a new boat and it's like kind of perfect timing yeah. but it, it's the same model, but it, we, but on top of that, we get everything above board. Um, so we're, we're going out and contracting to be able to grab that data. Um, but I, I think that's it. I mean, as important as new business and new clients are, I mean, the integrations that we're working with and the awesome companies that are out there to integrate with, it's going to, going to make sense for the clients are, are numerous out there. And I, the integrations are vital to us being able to scale and we're, we're making tremendous progress right now. 
So here's the deal, man. I'm sitting here inventing products in my head that people like you that are way smarter than me have already thought about. But I'm where my mind is going as I'm listening to you talk is thinking about how Glovebox is ramping up mm -hmm. and how just wondering if there's ever a possibility or I mean, you may already be talking to them or whatever. And if you can't talk about it, that's cool, too. But I can just see having this integrated with that app. And yeah. now people are talking on their cell phones, which they're much more likely to talk about. And you can use that with some of what they're putting together. And, you know, when we had them on the podcast, we were talking about how you're going to be able to cross sell different lines and the agent never even touches it because mm -hmm. the carriers are operating inside their ecosystem. And I can only imagine like a husband and a wife getting in like a shouting match about, you don't, you don't even have any life insurance. I'm poor. If nothing you know, <laughs> happens to you. And the next thing you know, boom, glove box, like somebody say life insurance. And the <laughs> centimeter score is really low on this one. You know, but I mean, I, I just think the application's <laughs> endless at that point. It, it is. I, I actually look at it even from like um, even a simpler form, too, because Glovebox is tremendous what they're doing as far as putting a lot of good insights in a way for agencies to communicate with clients, especially through an app like that, because that's where everybody's transacting business. And and without going into details, we're, we're talking with, a, you know, a pretty large group at their own kind of uh, proprietary app they provide to their their members. And it's that same type of insight, not so much of listening in to the audio of it too without their consent. It's more so of, hey, their centimeter scores here, they're coming up for renewal. Let's start peppering them with, hey, you guys do need an additional million dollars of umbrella limit. You guys need uh, cyber on your, on your bot policy and all this other stuff too. It, it's being able to push that stuff in the hands of the end insured so then the agent knows when they view to be able to go communicate with them too. And it just, I don't want to call it sale, making sales easy and, or leading a horse to water, but you're almost getting to the point where you can actually make this horse drink uh, for the first time. Um, if you connect the right technologies together and if you're able to um, get it into the right hands of the right people too, um, and trying to make sales, account management, service, and everybody's job so much easier uh, versus having to go fish for those opportunities. Yeah, I mean, it's it's nuts, man. And the thing is, I mean, we're already there. I mean, what you guys are doing, I don't want to diminish it by any stretch, but I mean, this type of technology has already been in application yeah. in a lot of other places outside yeah. the insurance industry. Mm -hmm. I mean, probably Alexa or Google Nest or one of those being some examples, probably way watered down and probably – you know, I'll go ahead and say it maybe a little shadier than I'd like him to be because I can't even have a conversation with my wife in the living room with the Alexa tower sitting behind us without me going to my computer. Next thing you know, in a Dude, completely unrelated device, crazy. and I'm getting hammered with ads for exactly what it was that we were talking about. And people, you know, they, they, they half joke about it being a government conspiracy or theory or whatever else. But the truth is, this is where technology's heading. I mean... It's 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 very convenient. It can have a great application. I think that for some people, it's probably a little scary too because they don't want to. You know, they're concerned about privacy issues and everything else. That has to be some sort of an obstacle for you. How do you guys overcome that? It, it always is. And but if I look at like the core the core data that that age. And I go back to the risk match days, like it was a little bit different conversation because that was really the first time when you were asking, hey, I need access to your data. Um, but I think once you get over that initial hump and you have the conversations and, and they understand what it's going to mean to them and how they're going to be able to use it, it start to open up a little bit further and obviously have the right security process place um, to be able to do that. The conversation is not as difficult these days as it was you know, five, six years ago. Um, because I think people are starting to get a lot more. They're they're all cloud for the most part cloud based agencies on their AMS. They they've got data elsewhere too. They understand if we have the right procedures, we're going to be good. Um, but that is like everybody's got their own little wiretap in their house. I mean that's something that you know we haven't gotten into gotten into yet without you know without phone to an agency and stuff too. I'm talking about like you know some of the ancillary stuff you were just talking about. Um, it's still a challenge in in some regards, but. It's the way the world is going to be. I wish I had better, but that advantage of these technologies if, if you want to use it. Um, if you want to well, be look, able to look, I mean, the fact way. is you either adopt it or you don't, yeah, period. Sure. And if you don't adopt it, the risk you run is rendering yourself obsolete. Exactly. Because if your competition down the road does, they're going to have a much better handle on what's going on with their book of business, what their competitive opportunities are in that general area. And I mean, 
you know, I don't want to say keeping up with the Joneses, but listen, people, we've I've been preaching this for probably going on two or three years now. Yeah. You're you're not competing with the agency down the street or you know, Hippo or Lemonade or any of these people. You're competing against Amazon and Google and the people that are literally the pioneers of modern technology, in yes. my opinion. You know, if you yeah. go back to the early 2000s, they're the ones that have all of this in place already. So if you're going to try to keep up with them, you're going to have to make some business decisions similar mm -hmm. to the business decisions they made to get themselves to where they are right now. And part of that is taking a leap of faith, adopting some new technology, yeah. putting it in your agency and actually using it. That, that, that's totally spot on. And, and I think now it's, there's actually options for agencies regardless of size because before it was just like kind of limited to the agencies that were like the Microsofts and the Googles that had a ton of capital. They had Marsh, Aon, Willis, all the, and, and then they had the resources on the back end to be able to build stuff out. But I think especially like ever since COVID, um, we talk about like what it did for our company in COVID because it was obviously a very tough time from like a, a scaling technology company, but it helps because what we do as a company at our core helps bring our customers who are the agents closer to their customers. Um, because if you can get really efficient at knowing which customers are, are in a good spot, which ones to basically fire and get rid of, or which ones you want to hang on to and retain, that's the type of information that those type of competitors have um, that's out there. So you need, you literally need to, it's an arms race right now and you need to arm yourself. And, and it's not saying you have to go spend a million dollars a year on technology because there's some very great, affordable, easy to use options that are available agencies from a sole proprietorship, a one man shop, and maybe a couple of VAs all the way up to, you know, companies with hundreds and hundreds of employees. Um, I use the same analogy all the time with an arms race, because I think we're in the same spot with the, there's an arms race right now for whoever can come out with the first fully integrated AMS CRM that's a single product. Mm -hmm. Whoever figures that out first is going to get the boatload of money, you uh -huh. know. Um, but it's interesting to watch it, man. I, you know, there's a lot of smart people out there. We yep. The podcast that we dropped on Monday this week was with Rachel Robinson from um, – CJOS, which she came out of nowhere and just hit me up on LinkedIn one day. And I was interested to hear what she had to say, because prior to using HubSpot, we used Zoho in our mm -hmm. agency. And their their product is uh, the Siege agency operating system sits as an application on top of Zoho CRM, oh, wow. okay. which I also didn't know was the uh, most used CRM or the largest in terms of users in the world. Salesforce is number one in revenue, but, you know, Zoho hands down has more users. I, I didn't that's know that. a, that surprised me. Else. Yeah, it blew my mind. But if you think about the price point and everything else, it makes right. sense. It's probably one of those things people sign up for, never use, and it's just on a recurring monthly payment. It's <laughs> only thirty five bucks, and so they never cancel it. I'm so pretty sure I'm still users. getting the emails from you. you <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know I've got a subscription to them. I have to cancel it. I miss the damn thing every single year. And, and forget I think to do it's, it. I think it's done now. I reminded yeah. you enough times to where it's, I think it's well, done. Well, I think I what happened kidding. is I finally had a debit card expire, and it won't charge it anymore. <laughs> yeah, maybe, so maybe. I think that's probably what it is. It's a, it's a anyhow, brilliant Planet Fitness, Planet Fitness model. <laughs> Get as much oh, as yeah. dude, listen, let me yeah. tell you something. We had a place down here called UFIT, and yep. – you literally had to send them your kidney in a priority envelope in order to get your membership canceled. I, I, I couldn't believe it. Is like that, I think that's the one that I think that's the one that I'm at. It's like purple and green. I, yeah, I, it was, I don't literally even literally know because like, I haven't been in like a year and a half. It's literally like 10 bucks a month. So it's not even the money. It's just an annoyance. And I finally was like, you know what? You win. You made it so complicated for me to get out of your billing that I'm just going to pay the 10 bucks a month till my debit card expires. Yep. I'll get hacked in another couple months. Anyhow, I'm an easy target. <laughs> I've been nailed. I can't tell you how many times it, it gas stations or whatever. So anyhow, <laughs> but I mean, let's talk a little bit about agency data. Cause I think that's yeah. one of the things that made Ryan's episode so good. And yeah. I know Kyle was going to had a question. Yeah. I just wanted to see what the quality of it was, you know, when agents first reach out, like what, what do you guys see? <laughs> yeah. Back to the comment I made, like, and, and I, I did listen to the podcast you did with Ryan too, and it was really intriguing. But like, I think agents are as far as the quality of their data, but they don't realize actually how much is in there. And it's typically not as bad as you think it is. Yeah. Um, it, it's it, it, as it risk match. It's never as uh, bad as you think. It's never as good as you. Oh. Um, so it's always somewhere somewhere in that middle. Um, but like, but you always have to start somewhere. And and I, you know, there's actually been this really good. Uh, 
depiction of uh, a bunch of Lego blocks and being able to tell a story that's been floating around in the last couple of days, basically like from raw data being just a pile of Legos and then actually being able to tell a story with it after like five stages and it turns into a house. Um, but you have to start somewhere, which is that raw pile. And if you're not a Marsh Willis Aon, a large you know organization like that, have resources to be able to just grab all your data at once and then try to sift it out. So that's why you partner with companies like us and a bunch of the other ones that are out there in the data and the analytics space. Because once you are able to at least extract the data and start to put it in some semblance of pieces to start to get some understanding of what you have, that allows you to be able to start setting that baseline to go tell that story as far as what it could be. Um, you're always going to have there's going to be warts on it. There's going to be parts of the data that really suck. It's going to say, okay, my industry codes are a mess. I only have email addresses for 40% of my clients. Phone numbers are here. I don't even have premium volumes in for 75% of my clients. But without getting some type of partner to be able to pull that data out and look at it to see what's there, you're never going to be able to go be and find those shortfalls without paying somebody a serious amount of money to go do it. Um, so I'm take a take one step first. Whether it be, I know Chris Paradis is very heavy with uh, Peggy uh, Corbett, who does consulting for Hawksoft. Talk with someone like that for one of the agency management systems first. Um, see where you're at or you utilize a business intelligence tool. You can do Tableau, Us, Risk Match, some of these ones that are going to pull it out. But it's, it is never as bad as you think, but it always gives you a good way, spot to where can we start spending our time to where we're going to get the most value long term the data we're using. Is there an optimal place for somebody to be before they engage with you guys? As far as actual da data quality, mm -hmm. yeah. we have our, I mean, selfishly, we have our tables that's going to help reflect appropriately, like in the Donna product, like the, the, the best way. But I think when you do look at client and policy level details, that's where you start. So your client detail, make sure addresses, phone numbers, um, email addresses, because that stuff's where you're going to go get the fun things to learn about the customer from the external data. But when you get from the policy standpoint, make sure you got good car carrier information in there. Don't put just, you know, um, TR for travelers or TR. Like, make sure some of that information is important because hmm. that I think from the top level of an agency, they need to better understand where their carriers, where they're placing business with. They have opportunities to move pieces of business to another carrier. That's going to make sense for the clients and them economic standpoint. Um, and as you then you start to look at in volumes, make sure that's available. I know download will take care of a lot of this stuff. It doesn't come across appropriately. Um, commission reporting. There's a handful of fields, I think, from a, an executive standpoint that you can really start to get a good picture of where you stand right now. And then you work with companies like us or others that can give you a forward-looking view as far as where you can be um, at that same time. Cool. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I mean, Ryan said something similar, too, because I think there's a misconception that your data has to be perfect mm -hmm. before you can start trying to move forward. Absolutely. And I just don't think anybody running an agency has perfect data. They may no. once they have tools in place yeah. because they're forced to, you mm -hmm. know, to a certain degree. But I know we don't. You know, I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt we don't. And, yeah. you know, that's been a – as we have grown and scaled relatively quickly – that's been a pain point for us, you know, to make sure because we don't, again, I'm going to go back to what I, I said earlier about the arms race with CRM AMS integration being completely flawless. You know, we run out of HubSpot almost mm -hmm. 100% at this point. We have Hawksoft as our AMS. They have served us well. But, you know, the comment that I always make is until you sell a policy and have to administer some level of insurance work, you're not an agency. Yep. You're a sales organization. You're, that, you're not an insurance agency until you actually have insurance you have to deal with. And so for us, this is not a knock on Hawksoft or any of the other AMSs out there. They're just not set up to be a CRM, period, you know, for all practical purposes. And, you know, for the types of accounts we go after and the amount of nurturing that has to be done, the length of the sales cycle, we have to have a full-blown CRM and automate yeah. as many of our campaigns as we possibly can, as well as the service requests that we have come in. When the download happens is when it gets into Hawksoft. Mm -hmm. And so then we go in, we clean it up, we make sure everything's right. So for us, it's literally been, we drew a line in the sand last year in 2020 in March and said, okay, we're done. Every time a renewal comes up, we're doing a complete deep dive into that account. Because again, with the size of accounts that we write, we don't have the kind of we're not slinging 600 homeowners policies yeah, a month. Right, right. I tell people all the time, if we write two dozen middle market accounts in a year, it's a banner year for our mm -hmm. agency. 
So it's not typically an issue with the volume in terms of the number of clients, but those clients each have anywhere between crud, man, like four and eight lines of coverage with yeah. us. So you have to drill down to policy level. And so that was our approach. You know, we, we said we're going to make sure it's perfect, as close to perfect as we can make it. When it's new business, as soon as we get it in, we're going to make sure that we hit this up exactly the way it needs to be. And at renewal, we're going to make sure that we revisit the stuff that's already in our book. And I want to say that it's probably about the best that it's ever been. Yeah. And we're at a point where we're getting ready to start deep diving into the AMS again to see. Because, I mean, we're missing we're missing opportunities, man. Yeah. I know we are. I can sit here yeah. and, and tell everybody I'm the greatest producer in the world. But you know what? I don't know what I'm missing if I continue to let my ego cloud, you know, opportunity, <laughs> right? I think that's what happens many times. I, and so what I really think is attractive about what you guys are doing and, and where I see this just being a freaking rocket ship is gathering that data across multiple platforms where there's really no aggregation for that right now. Yeah. The ability to gather data from VoIP, data from email, data from the management system and all of that and have that in a dashboard that you can look at that then has a score that tells mm -hmm. you exactly. Look, you don't even need to look at the individual data. In my mind, I'm looking at that score and if it's not where it's supposed to be, mm -hmm. now I'll drill down. So it's not like you have to go into every single account at that point. Some of your accounts, it's going to say, you know what? These people are on autopilot at this point. Just keep doing what you're doing. But here's where you need to focus your time. I mean, that's I, I just I can't wait to see where this thing goes, man, because it's it's crazy where it is right now. But, you know, you have a blank canvas. Well, this you, is uncharted territory. You do. And I think there's a, you, know, you said there and I am very I'm optimistic that the industry over the next five, seven years is going to get to that all encompassing solution. Uh, would that be, you know, better agency and neon, you know, what agency Zoom's doing? There's a lot of companies that are going that route too. Um, and then hopefully, you know, on the Vertiform side, they end up moving quicker um, to be able to start adopting and embed technologies in their system because that'll certainly help as well. But when you look at the producer piece, like there's no way that you can know everything about the opportunities. And I heard that mm -hmm. 7,000 times over the years when I'm sitting in front of a team of producers because I was one myself. I mean, we all, like you said, shiny object, we all have ADD to an extent. Um, and you can get pretty fat, happy real quick being a producer with the existing clients that you have because then you get caught up just working with those specific renewals, not worrying about the organic growth you can grab from those clients or even net new business. But when you can start identifying those clients that you don't need to spend that time on, um, that you should not spend that time on, but have it kind of pre-served to you instead of you having to go out and sort and find them, that's where you're going to win. And we just got done a week or two ago releasing Donna 3.0 and based off the feedback from a lot of our users, that's exactly what they said. Cause even our prior version was a lot of got all these opportunities in there too, but be able to, to serve it and click a button. So basically when you log in, David, you can go in and say 17 accounts over the next 30 days that we can go crush and I can go sell more business to, and I don't even have to click anything. I could just, you know, I see it right now, or you can, if you want to go build your own, you can. Um, that's when I mentioned, yeah, you get quicker to, the leading the horse to water and then when you embed that stuff into like an agency they get all the activities they need set up in place the automations there um the customer communications there you can team up with the, the marketing side of stuff there's so many endless possibilities um that's to really help agencies just be as efficient as possible um uh, but, but grow um that's that's what it's all about it's about retention and growth and i think that's where we fit in very well yeah, I mean, it seems like it's allowing people to optimize their time and spend that in the in the right areas that's mm -hmm. going to generate the best results. And you know, ultimately, as as we're in the sales game, that's that's the name of the game, right there. Yeah. I mean, you leading sales for for Arias and stuff. We we sit there and we look at opportunities they filter right. through, and and I I know. It, you, you can get off track very quickly at a scaling tech yeah. company when you start to look at projects and opportunities if you're not very focused. And it's the same exact thing when you're a producer, um, sure. when you're an account manager. Um, there's, there's a lot of different avenues to get to a number, but if you know where, where my expertise, where do I have the path of least resistance, where can we provide the most value, and you can, you're going to crush it. Um, what know. I just heard from that entire exchange, people, is if you're on a sales call with Ron Schroyer, you better have a good poker face and an even better poker voice if you're going to fool this technology because <laughs> he's going to know your centimeter score and he'll probably call you out on it. <laughs> I love that. I mean, I remember 
first, especially in technology, when you start working with live data for the first time. Um, we were talking with Paradiso um, when we gave him his first piece. Once we used his his data as our as our tester, and I'm like I'm sitting there like you know fingers crossed, please 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 work um, of it. So he's still, <laughs> I want to I want to see my dad, um, you know Mr. Parody. So he, he's a social media champ now because he's like Chris is you know always posting on him. But he's like I want to see what my dad's score is for me. And it was like an 89 or 90 and stuff too, and everything else. And he's like that. Well, that that makes sense. Then he wanted to see one of his clients that he really didn't want care about. That was like not a nice person that doesn't interact and, you know, cancels, renews, comes back, remarkets, does all these things. And he was like a 40. And I, and I, I looked at, I told on your after he got that call, I said, I think we got something here because I mean, it, it was really unique um, to see customers that are in a good spot with you too. And when they start trending downwards, people are like, Oh, I know that's not true. And we hear stories. Oh, they, they ended up leaving us as an organization like two, two weeks later for no reason. Wow. Um, well, I think that's interesting, man. You know, I, I can tell you from my perspective, I would be the guy that wants to guess what the centimeter score on an account is and then go click on it to see what it is and yep. see how far off my perception is from what basically reality is. That'd be interesting. Point. But you, you brought up again. You brought up a good point. I made it. I made the, the comment earlier. You don't want to let your ego get in the way of sales. I mean, mm -hmm. I think that that's something that that's probably fairly prudent advice to everybody. Is is we move into using technology like this, trust it. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. It, it, don't say no. The centimeter score is not really a forty. It's an eighty. First off, you didn't even know what a freaking centimeter score <laughs> was until you had this. So how are you an expert on it all of a sudden? You know, but. You have the tool for a reason. Trust the technology and use it to do what it's supposed to do, and you'll wild be wildly successful with it. But I could see that being a, a major problem, not for for Arius per se, but for the agencies who use it, just being like, "Eh, no, there's no way that's right." They've been with me for 20 years. Well, you know what? 19 of them, they didn't have a better option. Yeah, this year yeah, they we, do. Exactly. You, Perfect point. And, you know, I, I look at like you know, on your rog and Nick, I mean, they're very, very, very well versed and know the like, technical aspect of the amount of data, but there's so much truth in data. Once you get a large amount of it uh, uh, together too, as well, because then you can really start to uh, figure out, Hey, what, what, what certain event means what, and we're, in, we're now at this point um, to where we, we got a couple billion dollars worth of premium on Donna, but our foundational product Crux, which I mentioned the carriers have that we started use, utilizing the learnings. We've got overall 60 plus million policies. I mean, that's a lot of policies to learn off of, uh, a lot of volume of data to learn off of. I mean, I, we, we go back into the machine learning and the AI. If they agree with the recommendation we make, they can let us know. There's a, there's a, like a thumbs up and a thumbs down button in our platform that gives us feedback. But the important thing is we continue to build out that giant collection of data that we have and we continue to get more feedback from our customers about the validity of the recommendations we make. It's, it gets real smart and real. Um, and we're just scratching the surface because a lot of the data, that couple billion dollars we have on this right now um, is from like Hawksoft. We're just going to get rolling with the, all the other agency management systems, too. We've got we've got a good spread um, that's going to help us shoot that premium volume up, which is going to, again, help our users utilize it a lot more well, and, and i think about it. yeah i think about people like you know jeff she and caitlin and justin oh, yeah. Egar over at quantum that are yep. you know using a huge inbound call model like this is an invaluable tool for somebody like quantum yeah and i i love that team over there they have done so many cool things um and we're fortunate to help them out in a few different regards too as well with it but like I the way they're setting up that organization is going to be at the core of da data and technology first, and it's going to allow them to do so many other things because it's all about what you said too, David. You guys have you have the right things in in line when you're renewing accounts on, and that's where you need to start. So if you have that core technology and data set away, and then you know what processes you have to take, and it just turns into a well-oiled machine. Um, and they're, it's insane how fast that group has grown in the last two, two, almost two years now is their anniversary. And then uh, what they're going to do over the next you know, couple is going to be amazing. Um, so, yeah, it's, there's, there's, some good, there's some good ones out there um, that we're all connected to. Yeah, and, you know, I think it's, um, it's funny because we're all connected to them, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, that's, that's the, the one thing is everybody's sort of running in this circle – Mm -hmm. And every time you look, it's the same people in the circle, just in a different, you know, role or a different environment or whatever. And that's one of the things that's interesting about the insurance industry. I think that if you are somebody who, and it's almost stupid that I'm saying this 
to uh, what's mostly producers and out, what they, who would think they were outgoing people, you are to your clients. You're not to your peers. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And so my point is that in the insurance industry, I don't know of any other industry out there where if you're open and willing to share information and collaborate and get past the fact that the other people can you know do what you do you can really drive a lot of change and make a positive mm -hmm. difference across, you know, everybody's agency working as a group. I mean, Paradiso is a great example. Yep. He's the first guy to say, Oh, you want to see what I got? Sure. Come on in. I'll show you. I'll open up my Hawks off. To you. I mean, it's like this guy will show you anything and everything you want to see about his data, how he runs his agency or anything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just having that kind of framework to work with and the people that, um, you know, that I've surrounded myself with and been fortunate enough to befriend over the course of the last few years, I wouldn't be nearly where I've been in terms of some of the things I've been able to accomplish without that. And again, it goes back. I think the theme of this is check your ego at the door, people, because, yeah. I mean, you don't know everything. And mm -hmm. I can tell you, I'm the first guy who, who will raise his hand and say, I don't know everything. I'll keep my mouth shut and listen is way more than I'll learn. I mean, then I'll, then I'll speak. And I learn way more that way, um, you know, and I ask a lot of questions, too. That's the only way to do it. And I look at like when we were up there for the mastermind group, I mean, it was amazing because there was like roughly 20, 20 people um, in that room. And like there were certain bits and parts of us were dead silent because we knew nothing about the subject matter that was out there. We <laughs> knew everything about it that you were just absorbing as much as you can. But going back to being selfless, like, and then later on in the evening, we're all sitting around the, the hotel lobby just around that table, like for hours, just talking, trading stories, like, you know, picking each other's brains about, about all types of different things. And, and nobody cares. There's, there's enough, especially in the agency side, there's enough business to go around. I don't care if, you know, somebody's two street right. business for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and if you can share and do that, it, pushing that industry forward. I mean, Paradiso is right at the core of that too. And I mean, I, I, I look at, the, the the web you look at coaching trees and stuff. so like the 20 30 people that we have worked with we have met that you included david too and and it because of him it's it's just absolutely incredible we wouldn't be where it was at because of guys like him and matt namoli and frank centner and and guys like that um so it, it is just a fun fun time to be a part of all this yeah it is absolutely so listen i want to be respectful of time we've been going we're we're basically at time what have we missed? What, what do you want to get out there that I didn't ask? I mean, I, I tried to throw everything at you. I could, man. Yeah, no, I, I think we dug into the Donna side of things, you know, very well. And I mean, my recommendation to anybody um, is just just take a step. Just fit, you know, That's the biggest thing is get that momentum built. Take one step forward at, at a time. And I think incrementally you're going to get better, whether it's from data quality, whatever you want to do with it. With, if it's potentially with us, that's fantastic. If not, just understand what's available and pick a move and go. Um, that's my biggest recommendation. And um, I'm more than happy to talk to anybody that wants to speak about Donna um, and what it could potentially do for an agency. You can learn more, a lot more in depth than what we got to here. But I felt like we told a pretty good story today as far as use cases, kind of what it is in a very, I'd, I'd say, simplistic manner, too. Sure. The one thing you didn't tell them is how to get a hold of you, man. That's, that's I mean, you're going to have a freaking <laughs> mass of leads coming in that nobody knows how to get them to you. Uh, that's what I love. So, so, yeah, I mean, absolutely. So, my, my email address is it's analytics.com and arius is a u r e u s um, analytics.com and our website's donna for agents that's f o r um, donna for agents.com there's a good storyline about what donna is centimeter there's there's dem short demo video um, that's available and uh, more than happy to talk in any which way and then you know my cell phone number is available too as well it's 724-689-7750 shoot me a text give me a call happy to talk about it when it comes to technology right now Cool deal. And for stuff, everybody, man. yeah, for everybody who didn't get that, writing it down, we'll put it all in the show notes when the podcast releases. So you can just click on a link, you lazy fools. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, thanks everybody for listening. Great conversation, Ron. Yeah. Love it. Look forward to having you guys in our agency and being able to do what you do. We're we're almost. I mean, I I realize we said just take a leap. We're almost there. We yep. we got to get through the last little bit of, of what we're doing to get traction launched and, and you're at the top of the list for us to do that. Um, I've already sold. I'm the easiest sale you'll ever have. There's, I mean, <laughs> you probably just have to teach me how to use it, but uh, we can um, aside from that, you know, I, I, I love it. You know, I'm always going to be on the early adoption curve. 
always have been. I don't see that changing anytime soon. So it was really a pleasure having you on. Appreciate you coming on and sharing everything you guys are doing with our audience. I know that I'm going to get a ton of positive feedback from this episode. And I encourage you guys to reach out to him. You know, Ron is not selling timeshares. <laughs> you know, he understands that the insurance industry is small, so he's not going to yep. hard sell you and make a bad name for himself because it'll damage him. He's going to educate you and let you make a decision. But I can tell you right now, this is this is going to be around for a long, long time. And I want to be the guy who says, I remember when, you know, I made that decision early yep. and nobody else was doing it or very mm -hmm. few had done it yet. And, you know, following Paradiso, not a bad move at all yeah, like for sure he, he tends to win a lot so mm -hmm. i like to hang out with guys that like to win it's it is a good thing and it's systemic and very contagious which is awesome so yep absolutely um, all right no, man, I, thanks I love again. It. no david kyle thanks so much really enjoyed this too and, and if anybody needs anything i'm here to be on it was a great time thanks ron cool appreciate deal. it man thanks, all man. right take care guys you've been listening to the power producers podcast you can follow Killing Commercial Insurance on Facebook and YouTube. And if you want to take your game to the next level, next level, check out our book, The Extra Two Minutes, and our website, killingcommercial.com.